Oh, hello. Uh, welcome to Room 101. I've just been in the vault looking back through the series. There's some brilliant bits I think we should see again, and some bits I absolutely love, but we didn't have time for them. I actually wanted to call it There's Just Not Enough Room 101, but they said it would confuse people. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enjoy. What's upsetting Charlie Brooker? Uh, yeah, this is uh, anything I don't want to do. Now, I recognise this is quite a broad one. Mm. Um, and it's a category that I find has expanded the older I get. I don't want it. Most places aren't worth going to. Most conversations aren't worth having. <laughs> most things aren't worth eating. Most items and objects in the world aren't worth looking at. I don't want to go to a forest or, or, or a picnic or watch your play or... or <laughs> not worth doing and you can't just apparently sit around in the house just staring at a phone all the time because that's sort of bad and the kids know this as well because they've discovered iPads and phones and everyone would rather be looking at those all the time obviously but because out of a sense of duty and guilt you end up going to a playground or on a picnic or to a bloody museum <laughs> and most things aren't worth bothering me okay Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> OK, so what's upsetting Jimmy? <laughs> tax loopholes, Frank. <laughs> so this isn't tax evasion, this is tax avoidance. So mm. it's following the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law and leaving it up to us to decide how much we pay. And I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know all the detail. I think that's been uh, reported on. Um, <laughs> and this is when you know you've got a tax problem. If anyone's ever had a letter through from HMRC, don't worry about that. Pop that in the recycling. They'll, they, will, they will send another letter. They're very good like that. <laughs> if, on the other hand, if the Prime Minister of the country that you live in breaks off from the G20 summit in Mexico and he comes out early to do a press conference where he talks about nothing other than your personal tax affairs. <laughs> that is going to be a problem. <laughs> and I know, because that is what happened to this guy. So what is winding up Catherine? Marathons. <laughs> My friend Jane has a ham-coloured husband called Brian. <laughs> Brian... <laughs> ..is one of these spandex men who runs marathons. I don't know what it is about a middle-aged man. He's got to know he can be 26 miles away from home on foot at any given moment. <laughs> they all just start to run. And then they link it to charity. Like, I've got to now subsidise their hobby. And, like, it's chair, it's just chair. I'm just running to raise awareness for cancer. We've heard of it. Sit down. <laughs> I think charity is a wonderful thing, but <clears throat> I donate to causes that I believe in because of the work that is achieved, not because someone from the office threatened to lose a toenail <laughs> by running around. I don't like it at all. No, I... I can see that, because if, if, if you said to someone, do you want to give money to the local children's hospital, and they said, yeah, but I want you to go on a big run. Yeah. But, <laughs> you don't just want to give it. No, no, I need you to run. <laughs> Some evil puppet master. <laughs> if I'm walking through central London and a homeless guy asks me for change, I'd OK, OK, what about a, what about a little dance? <laughs> <laughs> OK, what's winding up Josh? So, this is uh, people being rude about Paul McCartney. Top of the list, uh, your production team, seemingly, with that <laughs> picture. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it looks like there should be a dog's tail above that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else feel sick now? <laughs> um, yeah, I feel quite strongly about this. It seems to have been a thing that's kind of happened in the last decade that being half of the greatest songwriting partnership of all time, 
change in the face of popular music, change in the face of society, doesn't deem respect if you're a bit of a square 74-year-old. <laughs> like, he's 74. We're lucky he's not doing an advert for walk-in baths. <laughs> I've, I've made a list of the pros and cons of Paul McCartney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. OK, so this is basically how the argument goes. So, the pros, he was po responsible for changing popular music forever. He wrote Hey Jude. He invented the concept album. He produced the greatest Glastonbury headlines set ever while in his 60s. He wrote Blackbird. The frog chorus was quite good. He took... <laughs> <laughs> He took a decade pros. of public abuse. He headlined Live Aid. He made it okay to be a vegetarian. He wrote Hell to Scale to Fall on Hill, paperback writer Michelle, Eleanor Rigby for no one, and let it be. Cons, he dyes his hair. <laughs> <laughs> there are some amazing Paul McCartney lookalikes around. Look at this woman. Look at this woman. <laughs> I say God bless her, I do not mock this, um, this lovely old lady in, in her She's little so uh, Welsh home. But um, it has to be said that she does have more than a passing <laughs> resemblance. What do you Google if you want to find people who look astonishingly like Paul McCartney? Is exactly that. that. Just that. <laughs> OK. And so to Scarlet. Crocs. <laughs> Look at them. That, that makes my heart angry, just looking at that illustration. <laughs> It'd be awful. Like, I don't understand, like, who sat down and thought, right, we want a waterproof shoe, so what we'll do is put holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it makes no sense at all. And, like, no-one's ever, like, bought an outfit and went, I know what'll just set these off nice. <laughs> pair of Crocs. Well... Who's done that? Let's say I'm at a, a barbecue, mm -hmm. par example. One thing that annoys me is when you get a beef pâté, yeah. whereas I like proper minced beef, the sense of minced beef. <laughs> so what I do... <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I take off a crock. Oh, I, um, I load it. No. Oh, no, I can't bear it. And, this is like um, a sick bear Channel 4 documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I need a plunger. <laughs> OK, so what's upsetting Jeremy Paxman? <laughs> David Cameron was the worst Prime Minister we've had for a very, very long time, several generations, certainly since Anthony Eden, possibly since Neville Chamberlain, probably since Lord North, in fact, who lost the American colonies. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that I, could I, be I, the first Lord North reference we've ever had on this show. But, but not the last no, tonight, I, I can not. assure you. <laughs> I mean, the real sin, I think, with Cameron was that this man who, in the words of a friend of mine, got to the top of the tree in order to set it on fire, <laughs> put the interests of his party before the interests of the country and, and decided to have this referendum believed one thing was the only right outcome for the country, didn't campaign for it, got the opposite outcome, and then buggered off. <laughs> that doesn't seem like leadership to me. No. You obviously probably the only person here who sort of knew him, is that fair to say? Sort of, yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, I imagine he's one of those politicians who's very different sort of off-camera than he is on camera, is that I don't fair? think so. I mean, I mean, he's a smoothie chops. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of analysis we never got from you on news. <laughs> so what's making Phil angry? <laughs> oh, there he is. Uh, Tom Hiddleston gets me angrier than any event from history. <laughs> I... We don't need Tom Hiddleston, Eddie Redmayne, and Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> One of them is superfluous. <laughs> they all serve basically the same purpose. We only need Cumberbatch. <laughs> and then if Cumberbatch gets injured, 
we'll let Redmayne out the cage. <laughs> and then if Redmayne gets injured, we just don't make the film, because Tom Hiddleston's awful. He's just... <laughs> he's completely unaware of himself. He's someone who's just been told his entire life that he's wonderful. And he just offers these displays of talents he doesn't have. <laughs> There's so many actors now that, you know, they're quite replaceable. Oi. I only think they're different. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. It's not easy, is it, Steve? Not easy listening to this. Have you ever met him? He was my best man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, I haven't met him, but I tend but to I guess look... you're always up for the same parts, so... It's I, well, of course. <laughs> I, look for the, I look for the good in people, and I just assume that he can't be as awful as he comes across in every interview he does. <laughs> OK, and so to Alex. Tourist attractions. <laughs> it's not as much the tourist attractions themselves. Like, I like a pyramid as much as the next man. <laughs> it's the other people that go to them that ruin it. Every tourist attraction I have ever been to has been ruined by, by other people. By tourists. <laughs> it's horrendous. You know, we went to Mexico, went to Chichen Itza, the big temple. Mm -hmm. All I wanted was a funny little photo where it looked like I was holding it. <laughs> as much to ask if you've gone to Mexico. People getting in the way in the back of shot. <laughs> Why have I bothered? <laughs> well... <laughs> have you been to Sydney? Yes, I have been to Sydney. Now, the first time I went, cos I don't drink, I don't um, do drugs, so the only way I can get sort of spaced out now is with a long-haul flight. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're in Sydney, sort of like that, you just had 24 hours on, on a plane, and I went to the bay and looked at it, and I stood there on my own for about 10 minutes looking at this... Uh, you, you, you know, the, the Sydney Opera House. And I remember of all the thoughts you could have about that, about the architecture, about opera, whatever, the thought that went through my head most dominantly was, I bet I could make a model of that out of my own toenails. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> when I got home... <laughs> now, No, you can't get that in the souvenir shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, what about this? As a development I did when I, I found uh, another nail. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've managed to do with this one is Sydney by night. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> OK, so what is winding up Nish? Here we go! <laughs> you thought the cars thing was divisive. <laughs> uh, what's winding me up, Frank, is uh, Leave voters who are whinging. Um, ever and as you can tell from the palpable tension in the room, <laughs> well, I ha this is very much a room splitter. 52 to 48, if we're being specific. <laughs> uh, I am really sick of people who voted Leave uh, whinging about everything since Brexit. Because the thing is, if you voted Remain, and I'm not saying I did, but I did, right? <laughs> but it's the Leave voters, they are the worst winners of anything <laughs> I have ever come across in my entire life. <laughs> Part of the problem is that, you know, it's not within the British psyche to win. <clears throat> Like, we're not comfortable with it. And so, for them, they now feel really uncomfortable because Remainers, we've got the classic British thing. So, what I would say to them is, you won, we lost, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the following day after the referendum vote, um, in the UK, the number one Google inquiry was... What does it mean to leave the EU? <laughs> and, brilliantly, the second most popular um, Google search was, what is the EU? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a man who actually campaigned for leaving um, in his own back garden. 
in fact. And I find his argument pretty, you know, impressive. The European Union is corrupt to the core. It's here to take away our nationality, our identity, our free speech and our sovereignty. We want no part of it. Get us out now. <laughs> Keep Britain British. Rule Britannia. What I like is when he says the EU's taking away our identity and he's wearing a full face balaclava. <laughs> so what's upsetting Bill? Tarama Salata. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> I'm not decrying the good stuff, the ancient stuff. I'm talking about this cheap kind of pinky goop. And it's suspiciously slimy. smooth as well, isn't it? It's got a strange slimy what do you texture. Mean suspiciously smooth. Well, because smooth. I feel like slimy. the good stuff. Slimy, yeah. The good yeah. stuff has texture. But the texture. Oh. Hummus is slimy. No. No. no, no it's no. gritty. <laughs> it's one of the great foods of the world. Hummus. The hummus with the carrot baton is one of the great <laughs> pleasures <laughs> of life. <laughs> you can put virtually anything in hummus. Yeah, but you exactly, the hummus needs help in the way that Tarama Salata doesn't. Yeah, but you had to have a flipping corn oh, cake. Well, there's to, a lot of flavour in force, that. To force the Tarama Salata down, you wouldn't get it with a spoon. That's cos I don't want to use my fingers. Well, use a straw. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> OK, and so to Scarlet. <laughs> what is it all about? <laughs> Even the people who are dabbing don't know what it's about. Like, you know how other hand gestures, like, that means hello, goodbye. Mm. That means yay. What does that mean? <laughs> what, like, I don't... It just looks like you're sniffing your armpit or doing a really weird Nazi salute. <laughs> it's just... It do, no, it just isn't good. I like the idea of a really weird Nazi salute. <laughs> as opposed to the nice normal ones. <laughs> but it's just, like... And it makes me feel old and I'm 26. I shouldn't be made to feel old. And, like, my little sister's 11 and I'll be just having a conversation, like, how was school? And she just dab. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you just don't get it. Well, what is it to get? Cos at first I thought, is it a celebratory thing? Like, cos people do it sometimes when they score goals. But then, recently, I went to the Metro Centre to buy some new trainers. And I went in and I was like, oh, have you got these in a the size four? And she got her other, like, colleague to go and get them. Walked out with my trainers and dabbed and went, yeah, he's got them. <laughs> Just an impromptu dabbing. Like, so came out with the shoes and went... As if to say, got them, I walked out. <laughs> <laughs> It's very similar to my uh, falconry pose. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel, like, angry, like, this is how my little sister is now communicating with her friends, like, through emojis and dabbing, like, not even through speech. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, like, all, like, <laughs> emojis and... You're but right. What is that communicate? What exactly. is that... What does that mean? Apparently, it can mean anything, cos my little sister's just... She does one-hand ones, two-hand ones. Apparently, they all mean different things, but I'm not with it. <laughs> so I don't understand. Yeah, I think there is a certain amount of coolness involved. And I think you could fall below the coolness level and not be able to do it. For example... Good job, bro. Go back. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Theo killed the Oh, oh, nice one. Oh, you almost fell. Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's not dab shame a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's just cooler anyway. Yeah, he's, in, he's going his own way, that kid. I like that. He's going places, eh? <laughs> um, we've got... It's so popular. Look, look at... Look at this, this is a member of the royal family, for goodness sake, Dabby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless he's just sort of... 
fending off ordinary people. <laughs> He's copying that little girl down there in the bottom right, isn't he? Yeah. Who looks like a Victorian lady who's fainting. <laughs> <laughs> so, to Sandy. Yeah. Pointless things you learn at school. <laughs> I have got... Yeah. So, let's well, start with uh, mathematics, OK? So, I spent many, many hours of my youth learning about something called logarithms. Now, I didn't understand what they were for, they seemed to me entirely pointless, uh, and the very day that I finally understood what they were about, we moved on and did something else, <laughs> and they've never come up again in <laughs> my entire life. In art class, so I can't really draw, the, I, the only tip I remember was they teaching us to draw faces, and they oh. said, um, start with the eyes, and always remember the eyes are halfway down the head. And that's... Well, that's not true. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, of course they are. That's why I have my glasses on under my ears. Like, <laughs> like, we're not 50% foreheads. Like, you yes. speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> the worst thing about that, I started saying it. For the last 30 seconds, I've been thinking I can't even look at Frank. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's upsetting, Phil. People who love the outdoors. I can't stand folks who love the outdoors. I hate the outdoors. The outdoors are terrible. We are born knowing the outdoors are terrible. There's a, the biggest clue that the outdoors are terrible is that we invented doors. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just middle class people who won't admit they're into bondage. Because they just <laughs> they strap all this unnecessary stuff to themselves. And like she, my girlfriend made me walk on the beach in Scotland. And we were walking for 10 minutes, and I thought, OK, time to go home now. We've, we've been on the beach. <laughs> and then she said, no, there's another hour of walking on the beach. I was like, but you can see, it just it stays a beach. We've got... <laughs> there's no twist at the end. You don't, you don't get to the end of the beach, and it's like, oh, it was an auction house the whole time. It's always a beach. <laughs> It's dry there, it's wet there, and it's all boring. <laughs> this might also be informed by the fact that I grew up in Borneo, where the outdoors is a very different beast. You know, if you're into the outdoors here, you get praise. If you're into the outdoors in Borneo, you get eaten. You get... <laughs> I, I just don't see the point of it. People always say, well, let's go for a walk. And it's like, where are you going? Nowhere. Where will you end up? Back here. Well, I'll beat you. I'll beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, we'll, we'll, we can look at trees. I've seen a tree. I haven't seen this episode of Cash in the Attic. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We have a clip. This is a Dutch chicken farmer. And the question is, does being a chicken farmer have an effect on you as a human being? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was an angel. Look at the hands of all the <laughs> 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 Okay, so what is upsetting Cammy? Oh. Hopefully, everyone will agree with me. I get upset when men don't stand up for women on the trains. All serious. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. It's so annoying. It really is so annoying. I because I do the trains all the time. Because traffic jams in London, they just do my head in. So my Achilles heel is is getting in a taxi or whatever, because Sky's the other side of London, so I drive to there quite a lot. Um, so I get get the train, and then when I get off the train at King's Cross, I get the tube. Don't, the... don't feel you have to give us the whole route. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It's the Piccadilly line. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I was travelling from South Ealing, right, to Covent Garden, cos I was doing yeah. uh, some work <laughs> in Soho. So I thought, right, I get on the tube, so I get as far as Hammersmith. It really gets crowded, and there's uh, a lady in there. I said, would you like a seat? And she said, no, I don't want one, thanks. I went, please. I'm, I'm, I... So I got up and gave her my seat. And she said, well, I've only got three stops to go. I'm going to Earl's Court. So I said, well, it doesn't matter. 
<laughs> After that, it's no problem. So she, so she takes my seat. So she sits in my seat, so I'm stood there. Just as we get to Earl's Court, mm. somebody asked me for a photo. Says, oh, I've been watching Soccer Saturday. Would you have a photo? And where were they going? <laughs> <laughs> I presume they were getting off at Earl's Court. Right, OK. Yeah, quickly. So, Ch changing to district? So they, take, <laughs> so they take a quick selfie, and then when I look back, there's a young fella sat in my seat. Oh, <laughs> now I'm that's... gutted. I'm absolutely devastated. Not only is there a young fella sat in my seat, there's an old and mature lady, I, I should say, with a walking stick stood right in front of him. So I am fuming. So he's got his headset on, listening to music. So I've pulled the thing out of his ear. <laughs> oh. And I've said, do you realise there's a lady there who needs to sit down? He went, I broke my leg in a car accident, and that's me nan with a walking stick. <laughs> OK, to Stephen. The Archers. <laughs> wow, you split them. That split the room in half. <laughs> oh, to begin. That, let's start with the theme tune, which manages to be jaunty and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> it's like it was written by the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Comes on the radio, I have to fly across the room and turn off. And then there's the programme itself. It's very, very, very boring. <laughs> I mean, I love radio drama. I do quite a lot of radio drama. Not after this, but I have no. in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly one particular radio yeah. drama you won't be so doing. I'm quite a lot of radio drama, and I love radio drama. I think it's great. It's really an intimate medium. You're talking to people right into their ear. But because, because you can't see the actors, there are certain things that have to be done to let them know what's going on. You have to say the characters' names every single scene at the beginning. Hello, Norma. Oh, hello, Brian. Who's that with you, Brian? Oh, Norma, this is Tony. Tony, meet Norma and Brian. Oh, hello, Tony. <laughs> Hi, guys, I'm Tony. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you get it. <laughs> every time anyone does anything, they have to let you know vocally that they're doing it. So pass me that box full of chickens. Oh, here we go! There it is! It's all these effort noises drive me nuts. One of the things I like about it is that thing of um, explaining what someone's doing. So that they, they, they use a sound effect, but they haven't quite got confidence in it. So, so I'll, I'll give you an example. Here we go. Oh! Justin, you're punching the coffee machine. Well, the... <laughs> talking about <laughs> oh well thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon